In today's video, I'm going to be talking about how this little thing can tell me so much about my cycle, the health of my hormones, my fertility, and how to avoid or achieve pregnancy depending on what you want. Hey guys, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Jills and I talk all about health, wellness, and self-development for women. So if that's something you want to learn more about, be sure to hit the red subscribe button below as well as the notification bell so you don't miss when I put out any new videos. All right, let's talk about temperature tracking and the fertility awareness method. First of all, just want to say that there is so much more to this than just using this as a way to either avoid pregnancy or achieve pregnancy. Now, obviously that can be a really big part of it, but tracking your temperature with your cycle is such a valuable tool to help you understand your cycle and what phase you're in, when to expect your period, how your hormones are looking, and just to connect better with your body overall. And I'll go into more detail about this later on in the video. So let's chat about what you need to start implementing the basal body temperature method. So first thing you need is a basal body thermometer. These are different than regular thermometers. They're designed for this specific purpose and are much more accurate and precise. You can just get them off of Amazon. The one that I got is from Amazon, but it's no longer available. So I'll link to a basically identical one in the description box below. Um, but I think they're only like 11 or $12. The next thing you need is somewhere to record your temperature every morning. I use the Kandara app personally. I've been using it since I started doing this two years ago. I really like it, really recommend it. It's just really easy to use and understand. I know there are a few apps out there that do this, but I think this one is the most popular. If you don't want to use an app, some people love to actually have it written down on paper all old school style. So if that's you, I've provided a link in the description box below for a site where you can download some charts, print them out and fill it out that way. This is what a temperature tracking chart looks like and it's laid out like this always. The day of your cycle is listed numerically up in the top row with day one being the first day of your period and then all of the columns have temperatures laid out vertically to the 10th of a degree. So the bottom is 97 degrees Fahrenheit and the top is 99 degrees. So starting from the bottom and going upwards, it goes 97 degrees, 97.1, 97.2, 97.3, and it just keeps going. So if you see a circle around that four in the first column there, then that means the temperature was 97.4 on day one. It looks a little intimidating at first, but it's really easy to understand and read once you get it. So you can either print this out or the Kandara app has it built in and it'll automatically fill out this chart for you depending on what you enter in. Those are the only two things that you need, but if you really want to take this seriously and understand this in depth, then I highly recommend that you get the book Taking Charge of Your Fertility by Toni Weschler. It is so useful and I cannot recommend it enough. She basically walks you through this step-by-step, step, talks about the other fertility signs, and helps you understand what certain things might mean or how to fix any problems that you're having. Real quick before I talk about how to do this, it's important to know that your temperatures can get thrown off if you have a really bad sleep where you only got four to five hours, or if you're working night shifts, or if you're sick. And lastly, this only works if you're not on hormonal birth control. If you're on birth control, then you're not ovulating, and therefore you're not going to have those same temperature shifts as someone who has a natural cycle. So just wanted to clarify that. Okay, let's talk about how to do it. It's really simple. All you have to do is immediately upon waking before doing anything else, take your thermometer, put it under your tongue, take your temperature and record it. And make sure you do this before you get out of bed and especially before you eat or drink anything. That's literally all you have to do every single morning, super easy. It's better if you can take your temperature at approximately the same time every day, like within the hour. But even if you don't do this it's not that big of a deal it just helps it to be more precise and accurate i don't wake up at the same time every day and it's been fine so this is clearly super easy to do but if you forget one morning that's okay it's not the end of the world just keep going the next morning now let's talk about what these temperatures mean what a cycle should look like and how to understand all of this so i'm going to show you an example of a completed chart to help explain but you might want to make this full screen so that you can see it a little bit easier here's an example of a 32 day long ovulatory cycle cycle. Now, as you can see in the chart, up until day 18, the temperatures are all relatively low and stay in the 97 degree range. After day 18, they suddenly jump up to consistently higher temperatures in the 98 degree range. 
And that's what you can expect. For the first half of the cycle up until ovulation, the temperatures tend to stay within the 97 degree range. And in the second half of the cycle, until you get your period again, they usually are in the 98 degree range. This drop at the end on day 33 is day one of your next period. And this normally goes onto a new chart, but just for demonstration sake, I'm including that there so that you can see that your temperature drops again right before or as you get your period. So now that you understand all that stuff, let's talk about the temperature shift that we saw. See this jump from 97.3 to 98.7? Now this is a very dramatic temperature shift and it's not always this dramatic, but this temperature shift is very important and shows you that you ovulated. This temp shift can be anywhere from a big degree shift like in the example here, or as little as 0.2 degrees higher over the previous six days temperatures. The ovulation itself usually occurs the day or two before the temp jump, so either day 17 or 18 in this example, which is a little bit later than normal, but not abnormal. And therefore you can expect to get your period in the next 12 to 16 days, as long as you did not get pregnant. So when it comes to temperature tracking, it's important to know that you can't confirm that you did in fact ovulate until after it occurs. So keep that in mind if you're planning on using this as a way to prevent pregnancy. That's why it's essential to understand the other fertility signs which are cervical mucus and cervical position. I won't be going into detail on those topics in this video but in the book that I mentioned earlier, Taking Charge of Your Fertility, it does go into great detail about this so you can read about it there. If you're planning on using this as a means of birth control, you'll want to be careful for about seven days prior to ovulation or more if you want that extra cushion as well as two days after so you can confirm that you did in fact ovulate. After that, you are unable to get pregnant since your ovulatory window has passed. You can only technically conceive for just the few days around ovulation, but sperm can live in the body for up to five days, so that's why we need that bigger cushion. But what's also cool for me personally is that when I wake up and take my temperature and see that it's dropped majorly after being consistently high for 12 to 16 days in the luteal phase, I can tell that I'm going to get my period that day. And if the temperature is still high, then I know that I won't. So it's just really cool to be able to see and to know when your period is coming without being on birth control pills. And real quick, let's say you are trying to conceive. If after that temperature shift, you have 18 plus days of consistently high temperatures, then that means that you're pregnant. So through the temperature tracking process, you can easily tell what phase of your cycle you're in and how best to support your body, whether you're in your menstrual phase, the follicular phase, the ovulatory phase, or the luteal phase. So I'm gonna recommend you go watch my video, Cycle Syncing 101, since this goes into detail about how to sync your life to your cycle and how best to support each phase in your cycle. So that's the basics of temperature tracking, but I want to show you some other things that are really important and helpful to know. You can have what seems like a normal cycle and a normal period, but actually not be ovulating. And this is obviously important to know when it comes to fertility, but this is also a sign of hormonal imbalance. So let me show you. Here's an example of a chart which there's no ovulation, otherwise known as an anovulatory cycle. As you can see, there is no clear temperature shift it's kind of just all over the place. When this happens, we know that no ovulation took place and therefore this person wouldn't be able to get pregnant in this cycle. So even though our cycles may appear normal, by taking our temperature and tracking this, we can tell if we are in fact ovulating. And if not, then we've got some work to do on bringing our hormones back in balance, not just for fertility sake, but for our overall health, because that's not normal. If our hormones are balanced, we should be ovulating consistently. However, However, if this is just a one-off random month where you don't ovulate, don't sweat it because our ovulation can get thrown off from stress and other big life changes. Another great thing you can learn from tracking your temperature is being aware of how long each phase in your cycle is and if that's normal. So for example, the luteal phase, the time between ovulation and your next period, that should be about 12 to 16 days. And if it's shorter than that, then that's a very strong sign that you have low progesterone. So this is good to know. The time before ovulation the follicular phase is much more variable between person to person and there's a wider range with what's considered normal but if you feel like something is off in that phase in your cycle you can use that to help do more guided research and you're likely to find out better answers one last thing your follicular phase can vary or get delayed due to stress or big life changes like I mentioned before but the luteal phase this does not vary it is not affected by stress or big life changes so let's Let's say that you're actively having sex but not wanting to get pregnant. If you weren't tracking your temperature, you might not realize that this cycle 
you actually ovulated five days late and therefore your period is gonna come five days later because you're not tracking your cycle and your temperature on the original due date of your period, you might get a little freaked out thinking that, uh oh, maybe I might be pregnant or something's going on. But if you were to be tracking, then you would know that there is no way you're gonna get your period on this date and that's actually supposed to come five days later. So there's no cause for concern, no false alarm. I think it's pretty cool how by tracking your temperature every morning, you can learn so much about your body, your cycle and your hormones. And if you have any questions, you can absolutely drop them below and I'll do my best to answer them or at least help guide you in the right direction. Hope you enjoyed and that you found that helpful and I'll see you guys next time.